Jennifer Bourne. Present. Heather Flemmer. Neela Crank Clements. Greg Eddington. George Massey. Present. Mary Jo Meacham. Present. Jeffrey Parks. Present. And Ann Zacharitz. You have a quorum. Thank you, Paula. I'd like to go over the procedures for the meeting that are on the back of your agenda, uh, please. <clears throat> the chairman will announce each case and ask interested parties to indicate their presence by raising their hand. Commissioners will discuss details of a case, calling on staff for details. Following this discussion, commissioners may choose to ask questions of parties present. Interested persons may speak to support or protest the application. The applicant will be entitled to one brief rebuttal. Interaction between applicant and protestants on the floor is not permitted. Persons speaking are asked to approach the center podium one at a time to introduce themselves by name and address and to present their position as succinctly as possible. And if you would sign in, the commission asks each speaker to limit his or her remarks to no more than five minutes. Following the public hearing on an application, the commission will take one of the following actions. One, approve the certificate of appropriateness. Two, continue the proposal. Three, deny the proposal with prejudice, which means the application may not be resubmitted for at least one year unless the commission determines that circumstances have changed. And four, <clears throat> or four, deny the proposal without prejudice, which means the applicant may reapply at any time. <clears throat> when an application has been approved and after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the CA to the applicant City construction permits cannot be issued until the CA has been issued. And uh, contacts HP staff for the final design review inspection to or withdraw items that will not be completed. That's new. Uh, and finally, any person agreed by any decision granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. All appeals shall be made within 10 days of the commission decision. Okay, so that's our rules. And now let's go to item two from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer, Katie. Um, we've been announcing this every month that the June meeting of the commission, and it's June 2016, um, we seem to fix that typo every other month um, mm -hmm. in the agenda, will be on May 25th rather than the regularly scheduled date for the June meeting. Um, so the deadline for that meeting has also moved up to April 26th. That is so that um, staff and commission members can attend the Statewide Historic Preservation Conference uh, June 1st through 3rd, 2016. So if you're planning on submitting a new application in the next couple of months, just be aware of those changes to the deadlines. Um, and as Alan mentioned, there was a new bullet on our um, process page. We are starting for HP and all of our design review districts kind of a new process to help out with the final inspections. Um, when your CA expires, we have inspectors that go out to verify that the work was done as it was approved, and we're going to start having um, our staff help with some of those that we could easily close out via um, some photos or an email, or um, especially if it's work that's not going to be done, that we can, before an inspector goes out in the field, say the applicants told us they won't be doing the work and just close that out and save them some time on that end. So it's a new process. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, so that's that new item. And there'll be more information on that in people's certificates. Okay. That's all. All right. So item three, uh, acceptance of the minutes from February. Does anybody ever have a chance to look at it? Is there any corrections? So I was not, I was not there, but I had a question. Okay. On item D2, um, it looks like in the language of the motion, the motion was to deny with prejudice. And the action at the bottom of that item, top of the next page, says denied without prejudice. Do you know which one actually happened? Very good. Sorry. Sorry, since I wasn't there, no, I was catching up on what. Yeah, yeah I think it was, uh, I can't remember. You have to go back and look at that. I think that was probably a deny with prejudice, but we'll check back and okay. make sure we have the correct one in both places. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Is there a motion? Since I wasn't there, I'd hate to make the motion. I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Okay, it's been moved by George Mashley and second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, minutes are accepted. On to code enforcement report. 
Item four. Inspector Cobb with the City of Oklahoma City Code Enforcement. Oh, I welcome. Have fully taken over since Greg Wood's retirement. And if you guys have any questions of last month's any questions, questions. I can answer what I can. So you're just getting up to speed with what's going on there? Yeah. Okay, okay. I was going to ask about 2101 Northwest 26th, right at 20, 26th and 10, 2101 Northwest 26th. If you knew it was um, it's listed as a second citation extension for 30 days, but uh, property maintenance, but it doesn't really give much more information than that. Uh, typically, on a 2101, there has been work, somebody doing some maintenance. Anytime I have to go out for a citation, I have the ability to give them an extension if they are starting to maintain it. Okay. So I have to document every 30 days there's progress being made on the property. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Guess not. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on to uh, item five, continuances, none. No new requests. Um, Mr. Chairman, I wonder, I would like to make a motion right, right. to move item number 7A to this part of the agenda. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's moved by Jeff Park, second by George Massey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item 7A is moved up. So, would you like to call that one? Yes, um, we actually do it. This is uh, the 89, 89er trail at various locations within downtown business district in Bricktown. Ward 6, um, request for a recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission to the Downtown Design Review Committee and Bricktown Urban Design Committee regarding application to install 28 historic markers in downtown and Bricktown. Um, this is a proposal that will go through various um, different processes for review as far as being some things that are put in the right of way and um, within other design review districts. But because it's um, a pretty significant installation having to do with uh, the history of Oklahoma City, historic information, making that um, available to the public and kind of promoting uh, that information. We felt that it was appropriate for the Historic Preservation Commission to have the opportunity to provide some comments on mm -hmm. kind of the content of it. And other bodies will review um, more of the design aspects of the signs. Okay, is the applicant present? I knew you were. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Chuck Wigan, and uh, I live in Heritage Hills and have been uh, a big fan of the history of Oklahoma City for many years. Um, this is a project that uh, uh, you have a lot of information about here in your packet. Um, it's been um, uh, locked in, in my head and some other people like Bob Blackburn, who is here to add a few comments here in a moment. Uh, for quite a few years, uh, we have uh, have thought that it's quite remarkable that this incredible story about the founding of Oklahoma City in a run on one day in 1889, today, even though it's captured in photographs, it's lost on the ground. There's really no physical evidence remaining of that run. And uh, for a city as, as um, energetic and interested in its past as Oklahoma City is, uh, we think that it deserves to be elevated with, uh, you know, an effort to tell that story. So uh, with Bob's encouragement and with the help of an editorial advisory board that has um, been looking on uh, every step of the way, uh, we have created these 25 markers that uh, would be located at specific points on the ground where something happened of significance uh, either that day or in ensuing weeks or really it's it, this captures that first year of Oklahoma City's existence and in some cases the stories spill over of course as you might expect to subsequent events later on. Um, I have brought two uh, illustrative uh, markers. These are uh, actual size. This is what they will look like on the ground. Uh, the only thing that uh, differs from what you've seen in your packet is that the stands which hold these markers will be 
you know, more fitting for the uh, uh, for display downtown than, than music stands. But uh, these will be appropriately designed to, to to carry the markers and to support abuse. And you know, if somebody runs into them, hopefully uh, they will not injure the person, and the person will not injure the sign. Um, we have. Uh, 28 locations, each one corresponds to a story. Um, many of these stories have specific pictures that show what it would have looked like at that time from that location. And that, of course, is, is, is an important part of the appeal of this, of this uh, story and, and trail, is to connect these great stories of the origin of the city with specific things in specific places. So this screen that you're looking at here, uh, which shows the, uh, the visit of the congressman who authorized the opening of the lands in 1889, they came to visit in September of that year to see how things were going. And they had a, a great uh, event at the Bone and McKinnon building, which is uh, right uh, on, uh, right near where the ice rink is today in, uh, in the Married Gardens. Uh, that, was, that was where this hotel stood, and uh, that was converted into a, uh, a, a, uh, a, a big banquet hall for that evening. And, uh, and so that's where that marker will be located, where you can see the building, and you can look at that land and see what's there today. So uh, not every marker is quite as specific as that, but most of them are, and those that are not are, are tied in some way to, uh, um, to the location where they're, they're being posted. As you get close to the end of the story, as you're seeing here, the Oklahoma, Ter the Oklahoma Territory Organic Act, uh, which was the federal authorization for territorial status for Oklahoma, uh, that occurred in May of 1890, so it was a full year after the land run. And the city had existed on an ad hoc basis for a full year without formal federal authorization as a territory. So getting this territorial act enacted was essential. It had been long awaited. And this marker would sit out on the grounds in front of City Hall, you know, reflecting the fact that this is our tie to city government today, that it was authorized originally by that territorial act. And this, this particular marker would also be on the circle out here on the east side of the building uh, where when you're standing at the sidewalk, you'd have a marker and you would look towards City Hall. So um, that's the essential idea of this trail. Um, I could go on and on about it. I'm immersed in this project. I've, I'm very excited about the fact that we're at the point now of having real markers to bring to you to tell to tell you what we'd like to do, and we'll be going through a series of these meetings with other boards and commissions to make sure that what we're doing uh, fits with everybody's expectations and hopes and, 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 and satisfies everybody's concerns. Um, I would like to ask Bob Blackburn if he might say a few words, because Bob has been with me on this project from the very beginning, and uh, I think has a unique perspective on this as the head of the Oklahoma History Center, and, and of course, he's written many books about Oklahoma history. Members, Bob Blackburn, Oklahoma Historical Society. I think I know each of you. But, uh, gosh, seven or eight years ago, I would guess, is when you first brought this to my attention. I've known Chuck since the late 70s. We both live in the same neighborhood, both decided to be urban pioneers and historic preservation districts. When he, he brought this up, he said, Bob, have you been to Boston? Have you seen the Freedom Trail? Yes, I had. Well, there's a series of markers, and some of you may have been there, where you get a sense of the history of the foundation of the community of Boston, because there's very little that takes you back to that time. Well, some of you have heard my speeches, and I always talk about the spirit of 89. Uh, of course, the land run itself on that one day was important, but really the importance there is what that created in a community that would incubate for the next 14 months before we became a legal, formal city. And that, that time period created a new personality 
for a community that makes us different from Tulsa or from Wichita or uh, Dallas or Little Rock or Albuquerque? What distinguishes us from every other city in this region and other cities in the country of a similar size is the fact that this was a city born grown. In that spirit of optimism, of hope, at that time in American history, the people who were attracted here, like Henry Overholzer, C.G. Grismill Jones, William T. Hales, it goes on and on, created a spirit. And then you can trace that spirit of 89. Angelo Scott, who wrote the first history of Oklahoma City in the 30s, talked about that spirit of 89. He, he was here. He was on that committee of 14. He's in one of, of Chuck's markers. And he wrote about that spirit as he recognized it still in the 30s. I wrote about it in the 1980s. I could recognize it. And I've seen how it's changed since the 80s. And it's still evolving, but it's still there. So if there's any touchstone for us in the history community, whether we're drawing attention back to our neighborhoods, the people who built the neighborhoods, those who built the streetcars or led the city, we've got to go back to that first year in the spirit of 89. And what Chuck has done is he's done a lot of work. In fact, I've been amazed. Uh, I now defer to Chuck if I get a question about the land run in that first year. I say, wait a minute, I could answer that. But I know someone who ha is better prepared now to answer that. And I could see why Chuck has, has gone on now for six or seven years of active involvement. He was curious about this and how that affected his city, his new home. He has discovered a lot of things that I did not know, pulled it together in a graphic way that can make it accessible, not only to those of us in town, but to those who come to visit our town and are wondering whether they should invest their resources and their time and their future here. I think this will make an impact in education, in tourism, community development, and then for us, a sense of community, that we all have something in common, no matter where we've come from, where we've settled in town, our economic class, our ethnicity, our race, this combines us into a community. We're all in it together, so any one decision affects all of us. To me, this helps us make a better decision and develop that sense of community. Well, that's more than you probably asked for there. Excuse me. Uh, as you can tell, like Chuck, this is very important. I'm happy to answer any questions. I guess I would add one thing to uh, what I've said previously, because I'm not sure it's in the materials we sent to you, but uh, these markers will have a connection with the website. So when you walk up to a marker, uh, if you are intrigued by what you see, uh, there are instructions in the lower right corner, how you can call it up, and you'll find additional information, additional photographs, uh, an audio version of what you're looking at on the, on the marker. So I think this will be uh, accessible to people who might not otherwise be, have the patience to stand there, or perhaps there's a physical disability and they can, uh, they can get it on their phone as well. I'm happy to answer any questions or... I think it's a fantastic project. I was going to ask you about the locations, um, how you would find them. Will your app tell you where they all are so you can... Well, each one them? of these markers has a small map in the lower right corner. So when you're walking... Most people are going to encounter these markers as randomly. You know, they're just set up in different places downtown. It will not be obvious why they're there. But hopefully when somebody sees one, he or she will be intrigued and stop long enough at least to look at some pictures, if nothing else. And then at that point, there will be probably another marker visible somewhere in some direction. So you'll probably get the idea that, gee, you know, I could go over and see that one too. And maybe you don't have time, or maybe you want to come back, or maybe you just want to go walk and see it. So uh, they're scattered around. The map on each one will tell you how to find them all. But the story is complicated. It's not really geographically, it's not perfectly chronological. So this will be, you know, a kind of find your way around sort of thing. And I hope that people. Uh, will encounter it in different ways and find ways to engage uh, in, in ways that are most productive to them, whether it's just to look at a few pictures or whether it's to come back with some school kids or their family and actually walk around and, and, and make an effort to see all of them or a portion of them. Thank you. Comments?
Great. No, I am also very um, appreciative of all the effort. I think it's a great, uh, great thing. As a group of people that are particularly also interested in Oklahoma City's history, um, I think it's fantastic to acknowledge that and, and understand what that story is and what makes Oklahoma City such a great city. Plus, it gets people outside and it gets people downtown. And I think those are two very important things also. I want to thank you for, for all of your effort. Six or seven years you've been working on this. Wow. I just have a short comment because I always have to comment. <laughs> My first question was, you know, I think it's a great project. I did at the very end, I read it, and I thought, <clears throat> I wonder what all the women were doing while all this was happening. It what seemed like kind of all the women were doing. It seemed like kind of a missing component in that mm. there was really no mention of any or very many women in the process of what was happening. That was just my thought. Sure. I mean, well, even though, you know, I guess my, my second thought would be even if they're at home helping all of the people be able to be out there and do their thing, it just seemed like that maybe there could have been something addressing what women were doing at the time of the run. There will be. Oh. And, and the story comes out in, in various ways. You know, one of the first places that you hear about the women is in the rules for the run, uh, which said that, uh, that uh, to be eligible, you had to be a male 21 years or older or a woman uh, 21 years uh, or older, uh, children could come with, uh, with a parent. So the run was overwhelmingly uh, a male population, but uh, in many cases, uh, in, in some cases women accompanied them, in other cases they came and joined their husbands later. Um, you probably know the story about Oklahoma Bell, the first uh, child born. Uh, uh, two days after the run. Um, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be critical of your, I thought it was a wonderful project. I'm just saying, I personally just got to the end of it, and that was just kind of my thought. So, you know, maybe they weren't participating. I mean, I, I, that's really the end of my statement. Just, just okay, curious. That's good input, and, and uh, I, I think you'll find it incorporated in various ways. Uh, what's, what you may not what you may think is missing in here, please let me know if you think it's an important story we need to, to uh, work on because we'll be augmenting these markers with this online story as well. I guess my feeling just dealing with history and writing histories, I always just, I think that, you know, sometimes it's really, it's not that they were specifically or one woman was important. It just seems like that as a backstory, they were very important. So that's kind of my comment. Absolutely. So, there'll be, thank there'll you. be a few pictures in there, too. Is, okay. Like, like Anna Overholzer, you know. Who. Okay. Chuck, will this be the designed to be expanded at any point, or is it possible to add two mar more markers as maybe other sites are identified? Or? Well, um, it's pretty hard to predict the future. Um, my hope is that this gets people interested and talking and thinking. And, uh, this could very easily be augmented with brochures, with uh, books, with flyers, and, and I hope it is. You know, our immediate objective, of course, is to get it established as a series of markers. But I hope in time that, uh, that, that you know, there are tour groups, that there are school teachers, there are, you know, parents that want to take their families or their classes around to see them, and, and hopefully, there will be some sort of um, uh, video available at some point. But these are more than I can plan on right now. Um, we, we, we do have this funded through all of these markers and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the smartphone website. Uh, beyond that, we'll see where it develops. But uh, if, if my sense of this is right and the interest of people is strong enough, I hope that this grows into much more than just the markers. Thank you. My uh, wife's grandmother was on the run, and I had encouraged her son, my wife's father, to, to come to Dr. Blackburn's uh, facility at the museum to record. There's a process for the recording of history. Is there any interface with any of those recordings, if anybody, if, hmm. if they're involved or? Could be. People that went on the run were on the run. 
Um, I'm not sure I understood your question. I was just wondering if, there's, if, if you can go to the museum site and hear audio of people that maybe were on the run or their family was on the run. That'd be great. To corroborate any of this. I'd love to incorporate that in the website because we do have, we will have these audio components. Yeah. And the more the merrier. Uh, just curiosity, how did the uh, your process of n naming the order from 1 to 28, I mean, how did that come about? Uh, kind of randomly. It was random. <laughs> we, we, we st it's not chronological exactly, right? Well, no, it isn't. And, you know, we started out doing it chronologically, and then, you know, when you go chronologically, there's a point at which certain stories don't, the chronology is not that important. Right. So the visit of the congressman, the 4th of July celebration, yeah, it was on July 4th, but what was going on in the city didn't really pertain to much else. Oh. Uh, it was more, you know, promotion of an event. So some of those ended up being at the end. And then individuals, when we get to stories of Overholzer, Colcord, uh, Richardson, and others, you know, they had their own markers. And then, uh, so it, because it's not geographically uh, the same as the chronological order, I finally concluded it didn't make any difference. So the numbers are arbitrary. We'll trust your judgment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fabulous. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody like to um, make a motion for recommending this? Let me read the staff comments, which are pretty good. I make a motion to forward the following comments that were included in the staff recommendation. Number one, two, three. Do you want me to read them? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, th I thought they were real, well, well put. So, I think the awareness of, his, of history is our biggest concern, or you know, comment. So, I'd be glad to add anybody other. If, do we have other comments that we'd like to add to staff? I mean, other than perhaps your comment, I don't know if you want to add that as, a, as an individual, additional comment, but. I'll just leave that as a. Comment. <laughs> okay. Outside of the official comment. It's been moved, is there a second? I will second that then. Okay, it's been moved by Joe Meacham and second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, recommended. Good Thank work. you very much. Appreciate your support. All right, uh, so back to our regular agenda. Um, no, uh, no national register nominations. Oh, um, consent document. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, oh, uh, sorry, I skipped right over. We have one dilapidated structure. Um, no. <laughs> right. Uh, A1, yes. Um, HPCA 16-00016 at 120 Northwest 27th Street, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Request to receive Historic Preservation Commission comments regarding the structure in the process of being declared dilapidated by the City of Oklahoma City Development Services Code Enforcement. Um, as we always refresh everyone's memory on these, um, the, the Commission does not approve or deny um, the demolition of a dilapidated structure. It is only to provide comment upon the structure's um, historic integrity and its impact on the integrity of the district. Uh, we actually starting, I think, with the next one that comes in, we will no longer be giving them an HPCA number because it's not, we're not giving them a certificate of appropriateness. We'll track those with a different number just for everyone's information. Okay, so. I have a question, Katie. Is, is, is there not a report that they attach or a report that they make that could be forwarded for us to make comments on? I mean, they, or, I mean, because all we have from them, correct, is the, is our own uh, application. Right. We get the application and we usually get photos attached. Um, I don't know. If, I'm not sure what other, what other. A structural report or a description of, mm -hmm. I mean, it just. I'm going to let our inspector okay. answer on. Okay. Uh, there is actually a violation notice. Uh, City employees and public can view some of that. Some of those, some of its public information. Mainly, it goes through the standards that do deem it dilapidated and what has to be there for that I have to inspect. I guess that, that's what I would be looking for. Is there a way in the future, perhaps, that we could get that we could 
have that included because I mean th this is they're a not really, they're just saying it's dilapidated and then we're relying on staff to decide why they think it's dilapidated. But remember your role is not Right, decide. right, I know. Okay. But whether no matter what we're doing, I mean it just seems like that we should just have more accurate information. information. I think we can we can work with um, the inspector on that on getting right. some more information to you. Right. I mean, as, not as, specifically on this one. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, you just look at it just as we want to, you know, it's, it would be easier to make a, what do we make, a recommendation. Is that correct? Yeah. If we knew why, what, what criteria that they were using. I mean, this is just a little house, but I wonder if it's a really big house or it seems like it's easier to, oh, well, here it is. It's little and it doesn't look like it's in really good shape. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell from the picture. Right. So, anyway, so there is more information. Or did yeah, you say that it's that not all publicly that available? Is, that information is given to the legal owners of the property. Okay. Anyone who has an attachment to the property, a financial okay. legal owner attachment to. So, are you saying that that information, that same information, is not public? Uh, I believe there is ways to. I mean, you could probably get it through records, through the, the municipal records. When you, well, but when there, you get I to mean, this right point, now it's a, it's a legal matter. Right. When you get to this point, has there ever been like a letter or a list of things that you write to the owner saying these are the things that must be corrected or that is we on the will? Post, yes, that's on every posting that I do in a property is a list of what is, what is under the standards of dilapidated or in this case of this property, it started out as property maintenance and was denied responsibility in the shape that it is with the, the, the roof and the building leaning and the roof nearly collapsing there are no interior framing of it it was all removed that it was worked as a dilapidated house the interior framing was removed there the majority some of it has been removed and as in like a remodel was going to happen started a and remodel didn't. at one time a few years back and then just abandoned it the house is leaning in different directions towards the back and the, the sag in the roof is pretty su substantial. So to some extent this body is not reviewing the condition of it right. anyway. No. But I think we can, for future reference, we can work with code enforcement to see if there's some additional documentation. Just cause I'm sure that's helpful for the commission and for the public to understand why something is considered dilapidated. Well, I agree with staff's recommendations to move forward with, with their comments of one and two. I can read them. Is that a motion? Yes. I don't know if we need to motion for this, do we? Yes. Yeah. I motion um, to an agreement for staff recommendation of forwarding the following comments. The structure retains its historic integrity and contributes to the historic integrity of the district, and demolition of the structure will have an adverse effect on the historic character of the district. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Jennifer Bourne, second by Joe Meacham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's forward with recommend or with comments. Thank you. Now. We have um, two items on the consent docket. Um, anyone on the commission, can, if you have any questions or want to pull an item, that's fine. Anybody? Or we can approve both. I move to approve both. Okay, is there a second? Second. Moved by Jennifer Borden, second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent document is approved. So if you are representing um, one of those two properties listed, 612 Northwest 19th or 817 Northwest 38th, your application is approved and you're free to go, um, unless you want to stay for the afternoon. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. Next. Um, HPCA 15 00186 at 233 Northwest 31st Street, Edgemere Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Monica Reed by Jeff Blake of Gummerson Associates for a certificate of appropriateness to one construct addition elective. Okay. Are you Mr. Blake? Yes. Okay. Any comments on this? We saw this last month. Yes, the commission saw this, uh, I think, actually two months ago, two months and ago. we've received some comments from the neighborhood that should be at um, everyone's seats. Okay, so it's changes, and you're recommending continuing or additional. 
review. So. You've read their specific findings of the things that you still need to work on. You feel comfortable working on them? <laughs> well, so I met with, with the board. Um, and I think we, we addressed most of those items. Uh, there was, I think, just a misunderstanding in the materials uh, with, with respect to the copper. And so that's fine. Um, there, we've adjusted the square footage to the 749, not to exceed the 750, so that's been addressed. And then we lowered the chimney uh, almost three feet to 15 foot, and they seem to find that acceptable as well. So, um, you know, there's, there still seems to be some concern. Uh, and then I think, I think there's a matter of interpretation in terms of second floor addition their, their, their findings were a second four edition should not be permitted on a corner lot. And I read through that this morning. The, the way I read that is if I had a one-story building, I could not come in and put a second floor on a corner lot. But this is a two-story building. So my interpretation of the rules are that if I was to come in and do a three-story building, and it definitely changed the view from the front of the house or even the side of the house, so that, that would be a complete violation. But um, I think we, we, we see things differently in terms of the way she's interpreting that, the write-up. They're recommending to deny the proposal. Right. I mean, the thing that I feel like that they're looking at is that if we reviewed it today, with just the one story, um, adding something to the one story on the west side, that we would not allow that, and that we are allowing that to be larger. Is that what you all are? That seems to be the biggest obstacle, in my opinion, after reading it, is that we are actually, we wouldn't, we wouldn't allow it today, but we are allowing the non-historic addition to be added on to. Expanded. Is that, I mean, it's a tough, I'm just, I'm just asking, there, are we in a, it seems like that maybe is their biggest. Is there somebody from the neighborhood that wants to speak to the comments? I saw you back there, so that's why. <laughs> uh, I did not attend the met with the committee and the, none of them could be here. They did send out their comments and I think the comments, since I was not at that meeting, those comments just have to stand on their own. Did everyone get a copy? Okay. Would you agree with uh, what Joe Meacham said the comments seem to be? Yes. Yeah. It seems to be the biggest objection yes. that we're I believe so. Adding on to a, although it was approved by the commission, correct? It was approved. Right. I, I can't say if, if that sunroom addition on the second floor would be approved or denied today. I can only say that it's approved today. Right. And, and so um, I, I guess I just asked the board to look at, you know, in my mind, there, there's some value to, to point out that um, Harvey, th this is a, a half-paved alley street, almost utility access. Um, it's not a, a prime corner focal point that has a lot of exposure. It is really tucked away. Um, and I just asked the board to consider, does eight more feet of, of that glass structure uh, really hurt the future of the neighborhood? This, th I've left this on the plans and, and the submittal because, ironically, this, this, even though it's a very small piece and seems to be a piece of contention, it's extremely important to my client. She, she really, of the entire addition, this little 82 square feet is important to her, really important to her. So, um, so I've left it on. Uh, I mean, the, the comments say there was no response. I, I did respond at the meeting, and the meeting was attended by one other person other than Jan. Um, I, I said this is important to my client, and we think it has a minimal to no impact on the neighborhood. Um, 
between the vegetation in place, the elevation in place, and the location in the half street, um, I, I, I would almost challenge anyone to say, well, are there, are there three banks of windows there or four? I, it's, um, Could you describe how you made what kind of change? We don't have the, I don't have a drawing of the picture you had before. What was the change that you made on the second floor? So we pulled back the whole north elevation and it, it literally, only, I can't remember the exact number, it only had to reduce by about 75, 85 square feet, I suppose. So the one you proposed went across the whole deck. Yes, we took, we took 8 to 10 inches off the first floor and something similar off the second floor enclosed footprint, um, but not necessarily the sunroom area. And that's, that's what I'm asking. Did the did so, your original design for you looked the looked at the west elevation, it shows the original sort of light gray. No, and, the original. And it's we tried to turn in, I, I think I definitely showed the chimney change. There's supposed to be a change that also shows the building stepping back. It's, it's subtle, I mean. Right, on the right. plans and on the elevations both, you can see the grade in, yeah. what the, the last. If I built it one way or the other, I don't even know if you could tell the difference, but one well, is 80 and, square feet smaller, so yeah, it's 749. Yeah. <laughs> and I, think, I think that's maybe part of the issue too, is the overall massing is still, is still very much the same as what was there before. Right. Um, and it's still a pretty massive right. appearing addition on the back of the structure. I'm just that. asking, I, I thought that, I, I just want to make sure that, uh, that this is correct. In your first design, you were only adding really one bay to the uh, sunroom. Correct. And, and we still are. And did you change that part in any that way? That part I did not change. Okay. The part you did change was the... The part that changed was the rest of the, the north elevation, which is... Up the first floor under the porch okay, and the I second see. floor above it. Okay. It just it didn't take very much to remove the small amount of square footage to get to seven forty nine. Get to seven. It's subtle. Hmm. I'm I'm in agreement on the street. I don't think that it's if any of you have had the opportunity just to walk this corner, she is nestled in there. It's just not, doesn't, doesn't have a lot of exposure at all. Um, I guess one of the comments or one of the questions also was <clears throat> if you don't include, say it's a cumulative, that you could come back for addition after addition after addition, right? Until you get to the 5% side area or whatever. <clears throat> is that an issue also? Well, so the, the language in the guidelines says new additions. So I think it would be pretty easy to interpret that as that that square footage limit applies to a new addition as it's proposed, not to cumulative, cumulative square foot of additions throughout time. Right. Um, we also have limitations in the guidelines on how deep and how wide an addition can be in proportion to the existing structure. So I think even if someone said, I added on 750 square feet last year and I'm going to add 750 more this year, at some point you would hit that other threshold. Right, right. Um, in addition to just the compatibility of the design itself, regardless of the that's always calculations. Out. That's always out there is the compatibility. Yes. Somewhat subjective. I think the committee was also our committee was also right, concerned right. that the first edition and now this second edition there's not going to be any distinction on the west side. I think we wanted I think what the committee are reading their notes they want to make sure that this new edition, if you approve it, is clearly distinct from the previous edition that's not historically accurate. And I think that's a concern. And I know they have done that on the east side by doing a, some setback or a Well, and, I, and I, we, do, we are putting a notch in that veneer to show that it's interrupted, that it, that is a new section of brick. Um, I mean, if the goal is to actually show contrast and that's a very different addition, we could, we could ever so slightly tweak the brick veneer in terms of the color or, the, you know, be one off red. If, if that's what everyone thinks 
will make the house look better. I question if that's the right decision. <laughs> right. The part that's the addition to the addition doesn't really bother me so much other than the potential visibility from the right of way. I, mean, it, it, I don't see a need for a distinction there. Right. If, if any place a, a distinction is, is necessary, it's the, where it hits the original structure at the lower floor. You've done the little brick notch. It's minimal. I guess it's very minimal. <laughs> yeah, minimal is a good way. Subtle. To, but subtle. Uh, yes, it is. It is subtle. <laughs> no <trick>. um, um, <laughs> little notch. You know, ideally, it would be something a little bit like a more back. distinguishable, and typically, it is. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. We're not specific, and it's you know, distinguishedness. I, right, how distinguished does it need to be? It's, I, it's not spelled out. I, it's yeah, subjective. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is it possible to set that back? Uh, well, foot. So you know, we kind of talked about this last time, and we, and we went down that road. It's, it's all driven by the sunroom addition above. I can't have the continuous glass uh, west elevation if we step in the first floor. It just, the numbers don't work. The, yep. The last section, the new section, can be set back a foot? Yeah, a it would look pretty funny, I think. But, I mean, so technically could it? Could I step back the glass sunroom one foot and have like a, if you look a, at the, a one fourth of that section step back a little bit? If you look at the photograph of the northwest corner, there's a pretty heavy column on that corner. It looks like you could get a setback. See right there on the north face is fairly heavy. Possible. I'm not opposed to, I mean, that, that really doesn't bother me in this. It seems like it's just a really, an addition, it's an extension of an original proposal. But what about the ground floor, though? You can't, you can't say, uh, set back the ground floor with also setting back the second the ground floor. The addition to the ground floor, which was the original, addition to the original. You were talking about the upstairs, is that correct? Well, he I agree. In addition to the, the addition, isn't it? Right. I'm sorry. I thought on the ground floor that there was a. And on the square footages, I, I think we all know this, but the first floor is all original square footage. There's nothing new on the on the first floor. Oh, yeah, if, if you let that pass, yes. <laughs> Joe, any comment? I, 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 it's still not exactly clear to me that I'm not a, I'm not really a, this time, I'm not really opposed to any of it. Based on, it's just, it's, a, it's in a unique situation, I think, where I'm, I'm in agreement that we would not approve it today, any of the adding on to a, a front facing uh, porch like that. We would deny the whole thing. Since it's there, I, I, I really don't think, the, in my opinion, I don't think the addition really. Even though it's visible from the street. Has that, but again, I'm kind of with him. It's not really a major, I, I, that doesn't bother me either. Anyway. It, it is a very minor street. So. It's one lane. I mean, I'm inclined to, I'm inclined to make a motion to approve. Um, if there are, uh, our staff report recommended continuance. So if you want to pick and choose any findings. Okay, I, that supplement. was my other question. Is there anything else? I, when you look, when I read your findings, what are you, are we at odds? Where are we at odds with the guidelines? Um, so the guidelines talk about additions on. Two and three. Yeah, two and three. Um, not being on character defining elevations and changing, changes to the massing and roof form. Um, I mean, I think you could leave those findings as they are and add a unique circumstance to explain why in this case. Which you just did kind of say. I mean, uh, that, that would be, that's what I'm inclined to do. Okay. So you need Are we to ready for a motion? Define those unique circumstances. I'll try. Okay. 
Any, any comments? Uh, well, I guess we we'll make the motion, then we can ask comments. I, any comments, more comments from the neighbor? No, that's okay. okay. Okay, let's see which. I mean, my, my only other to that would be if, 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 I, I, if there are people that are so inclined to be adamant about a denial, it would be easier to make a decision if they were here to give more information. Exactly. Based on that. Uh, I make a motion to... I think we understand. You just don't agree with them, so... Okay. I make a motion to um, approve HPCA 1500186 with the specific findings under staff, recommenda staff recommendations and the unique circumstances that the residence is located on a... Let's see. Let's see. Um, a smaller street? I'm not really, how do you really say that? Hmm, that's the right word. Minor? A half street? <laughs> a quasi alley? <laughs> okay, a street. A small street with reduced visibility. Okay, a small street with reduced visibility and that the um, and that, that affects both items too which would be the character defining elevation, and three, the significant change to the massing and roof form. Second. Okay, it's moved by Joe Meacham and second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. You are Thank you. approved. Ms. Gibbons. Thanks, Doug. HPCA 15-00204 at 2820 North Robinson Avenue, Jefferson Park, Ward 2, consideration of possible action on application of David and Rosemary Jackson for certificate of appropriateness to, one, replace all exterior doors required, two, rebuild existing windows required, three, reconstruct rear wall required, and four, replace flat roof with metal elective. Um, staff had recommended approval for all items but um, except for item four with the understanding that we thought we had some more documentation coming in um, for those items between when the staff reports had to go out and this meeting we have not received that documentation on um, existing conditions at windows and doors uh, so it may be something that the Commission wants to continue and see again in the future when we receive that or um, approve with the condition that that documentation be submitted to staff. Is the owner here? Angela, is that accurate? Is the owner here or representative? I mean, I would make a motion to, um, to continue, but... Um, it's a lot of information. There's a lot of things, and I think questions, I mean, they would have to, doesn't, I mean, uh, reconstructing the rear, rear wall is, is also dependent on them agreeing to uh, use a different material, brick, mm -hmm. instead of what they originally. Yes, or, or clarifying that they'll be doing that. I think they've indicated that they have the brick, they've salvaged it from when it fell off the wall, and it sounds like their intent is to reinstall the brick, but they did not include that in the application. So. Are they reconstructing the back with the picture, with the windows? The windows are going to be where they were, the windows and doors? Um, oh, don't know. Okay. I think you ought to continue the whole thing. I'll just make it continue. Okay. Yeah. I just want to I know agree. if that was included. Are they? You know. I can't. Uh, it, I make a motion to, to continue HBCA 15-00204 to the next meeting, which is? Um, do we want to? Do April or May? Uh, let's do May 4th. May 4th. Second. Okay. Moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Case is continued. Next case. HPCA 16 0006 at 326 Northwest 19th, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of John and Anna Russell by Sam Gresham. Um, Sam Gresham Architects for Certificate of Appropriateness to one, install new concrete patio at southeast corner of the house elective, two, install new outdoor kitchen elective, three, relocate driveway 11 feet south of current location and repair curb elective, four, extend existing brick fence 11 feet to the south elective, five, install driveway gate elective, 
six, install new concrete paving for parking and maneuvering elective, and seven, construct brick wall and install gates for trash and equipment storage elective. Sam Gresham here, represent the owner. Uh, I, I want to first of all point out that items one through five on this list were previously approved and the CA expired. Uh, Katie, you might be able to. Item five? Items one through five. One through five. One through five. We're going to ask that item six be continued as recommended in staff report. And uh, I, I'll let you tell me what you would like to do here. So one through five has been approved. One through five was on a previous CA that expired. Expired, um, okay. Before they completed the work, yes. Right. I've, I've heard of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do the work. I understand you can't get a continuance without or a, right. without having some of the work right. done. So. Yep. I was laughing because I had to do the same thing on personal project contractors. So okay. you'd be okay with continuing six and seven? Just six. Seven I'd like to discuss. And one of the items that I would like to sort of bring up, and, and maybe it's a bit unnecessary, I suppose, if we want to, is, is that the right of way on Hudson Street is 90 feet wide. It's 90 <laughs> feet wide. It's enormous. Uh, we had an open space issue with Katie has pointed out. We needed to have 50 percent of our land as pervious cover, as a porous surface. Currently, we're sort of battling that change in our plan. So item six will change because we're going to reduce the amount of paving. I mean, clearly to meet the 50 percent requirement. One of the other items, though, is that the idea of a 90-foot right-of-way means that from center line of street, 45 feet in is the property line. That's where we measure the green space on this property. I went up and down the street, and I tell you this is part, you know, it's concerned to me, too, is that my office is on Hudson Street. It's on Hudson and 23rd. Our, uh, the right-of-way comes almost up to our buildings at, at 23rd and Hudson. But as you go down the street, George, your fence is 13 feet inside the right-of-way. His just happens to be 15 feet, or no, 20 feet inside the right-of-way. So there's considerable amount of, of sort of history, historic use, It's let's fairly say. common to build it, a fence on the right-of-way. It is the rule, because Bill Carey's house at 16th and, and uh, Hudson is at 37 feet. He's still eight feet from inside the right-of-way with a fence that was put up in the 1920s. Um, of course, you go on down Kirk Humphrey's old house, which was the corner of 14th. That's 22 feet from the fence. It's 22 feet from center line of street. I had a laser, and as I drove down the street, I could roll down the window and shoot the laser. And so I did yours, and I did mine. And, and uh, anyway, all, this, all of them, I think the furthest one out was Bill Carey's at 37 feet, the oldest and most original one. The rest of them, all, without exception, are closer than 25 feet from center line of street. Street base is 25 feet. And so it's another, what is it, 25 feet, 65, 37 and a half feet to, you've got to be from center line 45 feet into the property line. So. Property lines are, are that right of way is, is a very. Well, but it's an existing fence. Yes, it is existing. Fixed fence. So. But, but let me bring you to my point, which is, <laughs> I don't want to wear you out, is that I was going to ask for uh, and, and join Heritage Hills if I could persuade that organization to, to apply for a vacation of the right of way to reduce it to 50 feet, which would make sense because it would bring everyone in compliance with how it's used anyway. It's just, it's the historic condition on that street. Everything is, is inside that right-of-way. Everything has been built on the right-of-way. And uh, for that reason, it seems reasonable. I don't know maybe if that's a process we'll maybe they begin planned, before maybe next they time. Maybe they plan a boulevard one day, but. Well, actually, there was a boulevard on 18th Street. The right-of-way there is 100 feet wow. on 18th Street. I've got the plats right here. It's, okay. They're sort of surprising. Now, 22nd Street is a 90-foot right-of-way, too. All of 22nd Street. And that is from, the, from Pennsylvania all the way down to the Capitol Building. Wow. Which, of course, part of that's gone now. But, um, huh. Interesting. Sort of fascinating. Good history. Um, so 
But you're also proposing putting some uses on the right of way, not just the Well, our purpose, uh, number, item number seven here is construct a brick wall and, and gates for a trash enclosure. Uh, the current wall, uh, brick wall, returns 11 feet or 12 feet back into the property. Um, we have an elevation on uh, 3A3.1. Uh, we're proposing uh, essentially to create what would look like a T, uh, another brick wall uh, perpendicular to the one that's already there to, to um, form a trash enclosure, a gated area where garbage cans could be brought forward up to the street, up to the, to the, to the driveway. We're, from the corner that you'd see, that, that you see in the photograph that's up on the screen, we're coming 11 feet south with uh, a new brick wall. That's the proposal, and that's one of the earlier items that was approved so, previously. So it's all behind the wall. Behind the wall. Uh, you wouldn't be able to see it from the street. And is it, it's usable space. Is it no, no roof, just a wall? It's just a wall. And gates. What kind of equipment storage? Is it plumbed? Is it well, plumbed? we had in mind putting the pool equipment back behind it, but I think we can be talked out of that um, because I think that's a bit remote. We're, I think we it's more see. of a question for the city and building on the right of way. Right. We, uh, I don't know if a revocable is yeah. possible, revocable permit is possible for that use. Uh, we've done it for other functions, but, but uh, I, I honestly, I don't know what. Now, though, think about from, that, from our point, it's behind an existing fence. So. Solid fence. Opaque. Sam, you, so you're just asking for approval for item 7 today? Item 7, yes. Could you just briefly describe what... Was it just what you talked about? Yeah, it's a wall. We, we have the current brick wall. You see it there, right. photograph it up there. We're, we're, speak, we're talking about adding a wall that's perpendicular to that, forming what would look like a T at the end of it, creating an enclosure. Uh, the new wall will continue as it does, an extension of the existing wall. If you look at the very back, lower right. Okay. Shows the trash enclosure. We have right. adding two gates, four foot six inches high. That would be uh, the wall on the left. In so we're just the, adding, we're not subtracting any of the original wall. That's right. Okay. They also are asking for approval of items one through five. Those were the ones that had been that approved right, before. Previously. Right. But right. Right. <clears throat> Sam, I had a uh, trans transaction further east uh, last year. How much is the? Is there a city easement on the south side of the property? Is Sam? there an easement? Um, I'm not sure. What's interesting is most of that is an original garage. The, um, it's pretty close to the property line on that yeah. side. If there was an alley or an easement back there, uh, and, and that's somewhat typical of houses, garages in that neighborhood, yeah. as you know. Yes, I know. So you I mentioned Bill read. Carey's, and I think Bill Carey's okay. garage is partially on the next neighbor's lot, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I always find property lines to be so abstract. Uh, you, you have to get somebody Shouldn't to be find them. Just a, Can't con see just them. a concept in our <laughs> neighborhoods. <laughs> okay. More comments? A motion? I make a motion to approve HPCA 16000006 items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and seven. Second. Okay, it's moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Those items are approved. And do we have to continue the last one? Continue to April 6th or May 4th? April 6th is fine. Do we need a motion for that? Make a motion uh, to continue item six of HPCA 16000006 to the May, what, I'm sorry, uh, May 4th meeting. Second. Moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item six continued. Thank you. He did say April 6th and not May 4th, I'm sorry, and then I'm I sorry. turned around and repeated May 4th. <laughs> April 6th. April 6th. Do we need to? Yes. Okay. She's, yeah, I think you actually said April 4th. But Joe said. I don't know why. April 6th. Okay. April 6th. Sam, you want, you want April. Okay. Are we good? 
So your motion was for May 4th, and it, it should have been and for April 6th. April 6th. So, um, could you, can I amend my? Could we take yes. A, could we okay. could take a short break? I've got to do something real quick, and we lose our quorum if I. Okay. Step can I away. just amend? Okay. Yeah. Can I amend my motion um, to continue item uh, six to April six? Second. Yes. Thank you. So it's, it's right, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Amended. Five minutes. Yes, sir. You guys ready? Okay, we're back in order. Thanks for the break. What is the next item? Uh, item 4, HPCA 16 00019 at 215 Northwest 20th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6, 
Consideration and possible action on application of James Bozarth by Tim um, Zajac of Design Partnerships, Inc. for certificate of appropriateness to one, demolish addition rear deck and chimney elective, two, construct addition elective, three, alter west kitchen window elective, four, relocate mechanical equipment elective, and five, construct deck elective. Okay. Mr. Zajac? Hello, I'm Tim Zajac for the owner. All right, any questions? There's a continuation for the uh, construction addition. Did you take a look at the findings? That staff? I did. Um, in my mind, when we when, we, when I was going through the outline of the square footages, the additional square footage that we're adding is less than 12, is less than 700 square feet. Portion of a portion of the house, as you see in the in the north elevation, technically could remain, but there are some foundation issues. And so we're removing that as opposed to adding at that point. And so, yes, the new addition is 990 square feet when you add the second floor, but the new additional square footage is less than the 750 square foot threshold. Katie, did you all consider that when you calculated? I don't believe we did. I don't think that that was made clear, um, at least in, a, in our evaluation of it. I guess I'm still confused. You said not uh, just in the report where it says um, how does it describe the the 990. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. The footprint of the historic house is approximately 978, with 50% being 489. The greater is the 750. Is the 990? I, I guess I'm still a little confused. Are we adding the first floor and the second floor to get to the 750 or just the footprint? The 750 is based on total square footage, first and second floor added first, together. First and second floor added together. Okay. Do you know what is the, have you calculated that particular part? What? You're saying the little part that that sticks out on the left side. You're saying that you're removing that and building and including that in the addition, but if, the, if you deducted that amount, where would you be? Yes, if you look at the demolition plan, we're removing the, the lower one story and the upper two story closet area that is right there in between both the windows. Uh huh. When it, based upon how the question is asked in the questionnaire, what is your addition? It is 990 total square feet that we are we are adding of new construction, and that is because a portion of the first floor has some structural issues down in the basement. We looked at just to, to remove it back, and so the actual addition or what would go on the tax rolls as as new new addition would be 680 square feet. I think that we should. Count. I think that that should be the number. Yeah. It makes you look better. <laughs> right. And, and, and I apologize for that because once I read the report, it was like, okay, I confused everybody because I just added, I just answered the question as it's literally stated, mm -hmm. as opposed to deducting out what we have as this existing portion. Because we could, we, we could in theory, reuse that. Uh, uh, um, 
in a portion, but with the structural issues that we have in the basement, it's just best Absolutely. for the structure itself, for the owners, for everyone, even though that's not the most economical route to go, it, it's, it's in the best interest to go back and, and remove that. So, I agree. But what we were trying to do is remain with the massing that we have in the existing, and you can see in this photograph, the neighbors to the west, you know, it's a, a, it's a full two-story addition. And that same thing happens on the east. What we've been trying to do is, is emulate the massing that we have now with the one-story portion of the addition and the two-story on top of that. So we're, what we're actually doing is, is reminiscent of what's existing there now, massing-wise to the neighborhood. The way, that the, the way that the house sits on the street, it's, it, from our streetscape, we're not visible in any way. Um, so we're actually trying to stay, with, stay within all the guidelines that, we, that are set forth. Okay. Katie, would that be the only exception to the guidelines that staff's that primary concern was just the square footage which i think has been clarified there's a, a chimney on the rear that um it looked like could feasibly be kept um and so we okay. had also i think raised that in the staff report that if it was possible to retain that chimney that would be preferred um, is that possible i don't think so with the interior uh, layout that we have currently okay um, unless we try, the only thing I think is if we tried to just keep it cosmetically. Um, I mean, it is possible to brace it from the attic and leave it standing. That, that was my comment of cosmetically we could would you be, try to. Would you be willing to include that? Could, to do what? Yeah. I'm, I would be willing to try to attempt it, yes. And if we need to continue to see, if there needs to be a continuance to see how the roof line would, would tie into it so, and that effect and those sorts of things. What would you do? What were you posing? We, know. possible. Uh, you take it down from, I mean, you brace it, then you can remove the, it from the, the bottom down. down, but you make a bracing system for the attic so that it sits on the... With the low slope of this existing house, it would be... Sometimes its location in the attic may not make it possible. It, in, this, in, in this particular situation, it would be extremely difficult. But I, I would I'd be willing to entertain anything. I mean, I would withdraw that condition. We've approved removing service chimneys like this. Right. Uh, is it a vent for the furnace or anything? Is it functional at all? or It's not functioning. Anymore. Okay. Nothing? No. Katie... It's, it basically looks like it's where the refrigerator goes. It's uh, all the way to the basement. Yeah. One condition would be that staff and that staff and the owner that you clearly articulate the square footage that is being added. Something. If you there uh, is that there would be a condition that you would that you and staff would figure out a way to clearly articulate this number so that it's in the file. It's it's recorded as less than 700, 750 or less. Oh, sure. By plans or I'd be Absolutely. I'd okay. be glad to do that. Motion? I make a motion to approve HPCA 16-00019 um, items 1 through 5 with, let's see, uh, no conditions except for item three. No item. Item two. Two would be continued, right? No. I, no. <laughs> Approve item two. Uh, with the with the um, condition that the owner supply uh, verified information that the addition is seven hundred and fifty square feet or less to staff. Do you want to strike that very last finding that says the addition exceeds maximum size criteria? Yes. Okay. Second. Oh, I think I had one. Oh, you're done. 
That was the condition on two. At that one. I didn't say anything about the chimney. Okay. Oh, I apologize. Condition that it should be terminated. Uh, and it can, and was that specifically addressed in here? On one? What it's, was that addressed? It's part of item one. Part of item one, okay. And I just want to clarify that it is part of, uh, that on part one, that, that to approve the removal of the, what did you call it? Service. Service chimney. So I call service, it. service chimney. So it is approved to be removed. Yes. Second. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, we haven't voted yet. Oh. <laughs> moved by Joe Meach and second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now you're approved. Thank you. <laughs> HPCA 16-00021 at um, numerous addresses along the <laughs> west side of um, North Pennsylvania um, in the Shepherd Historic District, Ward 2, consideration of possible action on application of Brent Ward for the City of Oklahoma City maps um, for a certificate of appropriateness to, one, install guardrails at retaining walls, elective. Well, I'm Brent Ward, the maps office. I'm glad to Welcome. be here today. Uh, what we're looking at basically is with the retaining walls that have been built, most of them along there are 30 inches or higher. And even though it's not required, we wanted to make the offer to the residents that we could be able to install a guardrail on those retaining walls just for safety. Have they requested that or have they requested a guardrail, the owners? We haven't approached them yet. We wanted to come to you first to see if it was even possible. But the intent, yes, is that if it's recommended by this body that we would uh, send out letters and reach each one of them and uh, have them either say yes or no that they would like it. And I mean, so we, I, I would hate to see just half do it and half don't. I think that would look awkward. I think that's when we do have one picture in here that would show an example of that. And there's only one property, as a matter of fact, that's not separated by driveways. And it'd be this, this location right here where if that were to happen, that one said yes and one said no, this would be the location. And that's what it would appear. I, I mean, personally, um, it's my neighborhood. I, I, we've, looked, we've been walking it as you've done it. I, I think that it would just... It would look awkward if, it w and that was my first question. Had you gotten any comments from the, have you talked to them about the possibility or are they interested or? Not yet. Okay. And it looks kind of big. I've, it looks chunky and it chunky, looks kind chunky of. Chunky is a very good word. It looks kind of highway, freeway. Utilitarian. Yeah. Well, it is just a Piper. picture that's been modified, Photoshop, superimposed. If you look on the third page. Well, I mean, right. it's a three inch pipe. Right. Right. And it's, so that's be, not the scale. To is it going to be black show. or is it going to be galvanized? Uh, well, in the illustration, we have black, but we're open to any suggestions or recommendations. It's more about the safety feature Gal of the guardrail. Galvanized steel pipe. I mean, and so really, I mean, it is, it's been kind of an interesting situation to evolve there. This is your because, neighborhood, so. It's not really in, um, we both live there. Um, it really, yeah. It really, from the bottom, I, I mean, there's no safety from the people walking on the sidewalk now. Now we are talking about having the neighbor fall off their yard Correct. because our retaining wall is so high that it's now dangerous. Is that, I mean, did y'all think about that in the beginning or? I don't know, no, to be honest. I mean, you know, small child, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Are these all, yeah. Right. Are these, are these all uh, side yards we're talking about? Yes. I mean, but they're like three to five, I mean, I don't know, maybe further than that, but in some cases, extremely close to the side door. I mean, you walk out, take two steps. If it was dark, you would just plunk right down on the sidewalk. I mean, the I retaining mean, wall is very close to the house. Very, huh. very Probably the property line, or close to it. Yeah, each property is different. Yeah. As you look at the, I mean, they they are when you drive down. It's tough. To see. Yeah, the the one that gives you the concern is when you go south of Twenty Fifth Street towards the shopping center, and uh, there between the fence and I mean, the retaining wall, right. the 
you know, it, it, it's the highest at that location as well. So and yeah, our, mowing, our concern. I mean, you just are so close to the edge there. Is a with the look at the detail, I guess. Are the rails right on top of the wall? Yes. Bolted to the wall or yes. drilled and bedded? Yes, currently they're shown as a standard detail that the city has I don't for guardrails. I guess I'd be interested to know what we other want. neighbors think of this before we right. say anything. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, we didn't really, there was, you know, I mean, me personally, I didn't like the idea in the first place mm -hmm. to make this big retaining wall because it was going to affect the, have an adverse effect, in my opinion, on the neighborhood, the history of the area right there, the walking path, and now, now we're adding to it. <laughs> we're not making it smaller, we're putting a big fat pipe thing on it. Right along a major it. street, you're making our I mean, short it kind of makes us look pretty... like a, it just is, I don't think it's enhancing that particular design. I don't know if there is an enhancing design, but that is not one that I would go, yay, what a great addition to the neighborhood. Right. Brent, what's the tallest the wall is? It's on the farthest south end, and it's just a little over five feet. Oh, it is five feet in yes. some places? I thought it was three. So well, in, in, in a lot of places, as you can tell, it's barely it 30 five. inches. But as you do go further south, the house that's just south of 25th Street is the one that has the highest elevation to the floor level of the house versus the street. So even before the sidewalk was there, there was a very steep right. drop and maybe a little path that people could fit right. through so that's our I, I will tell you that the that's degree, our location right, the degree of safety that you feel walking on that is limited I mean you are safe but it is I mean it is not any I mean it's like walking on a bridge or something you know where you're on the side and cars are you know just rushing past you and stuff it's, 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 just, it's all on the side yards I was think, thinking that it'd be best to, to fence the side yard so you know you can't access that far out. I mean, to me, it'd be almost better if it was a, you know, Wood. a wooden fence or something. Yeah. I mean, like a is, privacy fence. Well, well I think that kind of like a. I, mean, I don't really know. I didn't see it until. I think that surely there are other options that aren't quite so highway looking. I think there are also issues as you try and pull out of the neighborhood. Um, I know oh, that right. with retaining walls in place now, it's hard to see hmm. up right. and down Pennsylvania trying to pull out. Um, and we already had that problem severe at twenty. Oh, I never pull out on 25th. I, yeah, you know, I mean, but, because the sidewalls come up. I right, mean, the, yeah. the hill comes up so far, you can't see. Right. Our guidelines typically require that a fence be set back 24 inches from the sidewalk. Um, well, you couldn't do that. So you'd be you that much farther in. Right. But you right. couldn't do it because be right by the house. you couldn't mow. And then this, in some cases, 24 inches. you couldn't even walk on either side. There wouldn't be enough room. Right. <laughs> True. If you do look at the pictures like we have here, the yard that shows the most concern is the one south of 25th Street and you're correct there could be some opportunities there if it so were allowed for that can you show fence that to be moved can? out uh, closer to that retaining wall then the person would be in the backyard and not in that small area that they're going to have to maintain and, and again because of seeing that issue this one uh, no we don't have a picture of that one but if you I don't, think we the have work's site been, plan. I don't think the work's actually been done on that last house yet. No, what we have in that section right there is an AT&T vault that we've been working right. with, and they're going to okay. come out finally in the next couple of weeks and see if they can't lower the manhole uh -huh. because they can't move the vault. And we're going to have to okay. have a challenge there to actually complete that sidewalk. Gotcha. It is owned by AT&T? Yes. Okay. Brent, what are the property owner's rights making, helping make a decision or making a recommendation for this? Zero. Well, I know it's not a requirement from the, from the city or anyone that's building the sidewalk to put it on because it's not considered the walkable surface, which is normally where you put a guardrail. I, when it comes to rights, I don't know if there's anything specific that the city has written. I just think it's more of a logical concern that we have when we looked and visibly saw the height of the retaining walls and kind of put it in perspective that if that were me and I were there in that situation mm -hmm. and I was mowing the lawn, I well, 
I, I might want to have Normally we would have a situation if you have a occupied area, sidewalk, and then there's a drop-off next to it, then you put a guardrail in, but there's really, it's just, it's just grass above. It's not really a walking area. Uh, so I, and I, th I think it really is detracting from the appearance. Oh, I agree. There ought to be another way if you want to do something. But. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree that perhaps there are some safety considerations or something um, to help keep from falling off the wall as you're mowing your lawn, but um, I'm, I'm not a fan of what's been presented. Jeffrey would, uh, and Joe, would a, a more of a wrought iron fence look? More compatible to the neighborhood instead of this very industrial looking right. expressway look thing? I think that might be something to consider. Is that an issue? Is that a financial issue? Is this the cheapest for the city to be putting something in like this? You guys have a neighbor to say something? It definitely is not. Um, when we first discussed this proposal, uh, we looked at getting the least invasive possibility, the most transparent possibility for these locations. We also considered that there were several different varieties of iron fencing that could be proposed. And if several different property owners chose several different varieties, then we'd have this kind of patchwork going on there at the street. So um, it's definitely not based on cost initially. That was my recommendation to simplify the project as much as possible. It seems like the, the wrought iron would be more like a green belt. You're keeping the openness of the neighborhood for looking in and looking out. More residential. More residential looking, because this is, I wouldn't want that highway. by my house. It's like highway. And 25th, that, why didn't I think of, I had a, worked on a home on 25th and that, but why did I keep going out on, on at 25th? That was pretty, I should have gone to 26th, 7th. 26th is better. Yeah. The retaining wall itself, the city, I mean, that's city property. Correct. So whatever you install on top of that is ultimately the city's decision. Correct. Um, and maintenance. And maintenance of it. I'm thinking along the lines of the, the hit or miss or if people wanted different designs. I mean, you can well, give a homeowner as much, I mean, I as much gonna, or as little um, I was gonna suggest, opportunity to the next. I was going to suggest things. possibly the city working with the neighbors association, but there isn't a strong one, but maybe that's a possibility. I could, but I mean, what would we, if, if somebody, since it's only been finished a short amount of time, I mean, if somebody came in right now before we did, we did this, would we approve some kind of fencing there in, not on top, because they don't own that, but in their grass? I mean, would no. that be something, Katie, that we would be? I think we would treat it like any other side or backyard as far as the requirements for the height of the fence, for the setbacks, materials. I think that was one of staff's, do what? Right, not in the right of way. Um, and you know, I think we, we also had somewhat of a concern that, or a position that maybe it's better to do this in a uniform way right. than have each right. neighbor coming in and proposing well, their own solution to that's it. That's why I suggested a group discussion with the neighborhood to get all the same. And would the height of this fence be the same as the topography went lower? So it'd all be, you know what I'm saying? Well, they're all like a unique. The guardrail itself is all 42 inches high, and I do have in here in the diagram some plans. Good. And Good. you are correct in areas where the retaining wall drops to the uh, ground elevation for driveways and so forth. No, there's it doesn't continue. It stops at the point where the retaining wall is. Right. Less than 30 inches. But if it get higher, it would go up higher too. The it just goes. stays on the retaining wall. So right. the height from the top of the wall remains the same. But yes, it would follow as a retaining wall does right. the topography. If it was just a three inch pipe, then it'd be going up and then over. But if it was wrought iron or something, then it would, I don't know what it would do. Well, it, it would be in panels that would still go up and down, but it'd be more architectural, maybe. It wouldn't look as, you know, and probably taller if it was a wrought iron type fence. You don't see many fences that are, maybe not, I don't know. It's kind of created a... If it belongs to the city, what kind of approval do we really have? 
correct? I mean, they're putting it on top of. Well, the city has to get a CA for work they do in the historic district, just like a private property owner. We approve the um, sidewalks. Mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. okay. Joe made the motion. Right, we did approve the sidewalk. <laughs> and I would like to see them. I mean, I don't, anyway, I don't think they turned out that great. And I don't really see that the color that we were promised, that was thrown out way when we started. It's just There's nothing there that looks like historic concrete or matches other concrete. It looks like brand new concrete from beginning to end. Well, I, staff has to take some responsibility for that because Brent, we did work with Brent. We went out, we looked at test pours, we looked at colors. Um, I really hate concrete. Bad job. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I mean, it, it does Bad. not. There's nothing about it that looks. A lot of variety. But I, I don't really see how this was anyway. It's so unfortunate that now we've really are kind of having to add to the pro to something that it's not that. So we need to come up with the best solution. So. Well, I would move to continue it if you're willing to come up with something better. Uh, just give us recommendations if you're looking at a different style different height what you'd like us to do we'd be glad to come back to you i mean maybe we could have a selection process and then have a neighborhood meeting and, absolutely and you have then to bring the neighbors look at that them. and come back or something i don't think it's a gonna i mean since we've gone this far and we and it's i think if we're going to do something let's improve what we've started and not make it worse i think the only reason we didn't go to the neighbors first and right, finding out good. yes or no to come here was what if we gave them hopes that yes they could have it and then we come right. here and you're not in favor and so we would really need to probably make sure that before you take it to the neighbors and some of them want it that they'll have the right to then come back and you would approve it so i'm hearing we, that we think that something might be acceptable but would like to see other i mean maybe bring you know have Three choices or something. This not being one of them. Yeah, but not to completely eliminate. <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> we we heard from from several neighbors of, that received notices about this, um, wanting to know more, wanting to know what was being proposed. So I think you'll definitely get a response. Um, okay. If, if you reach but, out to them. We do think it'll be uniform, not piecemeal. So the the, the notifications only went to a certain radius from the street. We send notices like to the property owners that are listed here and then a set um, boundary of surrounding adjacent property of owners. These, to these properties. Right. Yep. I mean, I think that, you know, they would be willing to, you know, if they don't have to pay for it and it's going to be on top of the concrete, I mean, I think that we can get some good response because I think some people are going, or, you know, they're going to want something eventually. But it really hadn't been through a season. We haven't been through the lawn mowing season. Correct. You know, to get up there and. But the city, oh, the city is paying for this. Yes. Right, but instead of right. not doing anything, I think they'll be right. willing to work with us when you're getting oh, as a long free as they chance. don't have to pay for it. Okay. All right. So, but is there a motion? Something more appropriate to an historic district would be yes. appropriate. So, right. so, and if you could just give us any kind of a assistance as to that design or style, we really like that. We've got some guidelines. Well, I mean, transparent transparent fences are are something we approve fairly regularly, um, and those and can I'm, look like a number of different things. I think based on the comments, I think staff can probably provide some direction. You okay. might just look at what some other options. Right. I mean, there's lots of things that you put in parks, you know, in the city, and that are attractive. Right. So, you know, I think that we could find something that. You know that the city that you felt comfortable maintaining if that was the issue okay is there a motion or something motion to continue is that yes until you made it Should we continue uh, to may 4th give you time to okay. that would be good yes. there a second second Moved by jennifer born second by jeff parks all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed thank aye. you continue thank you brand thank you thanks brent HPCA 16-000222 at 434 Northwest 19th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of Gary and Darla O'Neill for certificate of appropriateness to, one, replace, reinstall windows and sleeping porch, elective, two, replace French doors at porch, elective, and three, replace front door and side lights, elective. Um, and I 
your staff report may be a little confusing and I would love if you could chime in on, um, we kind of had some option A, option B choices in there. I've got um, copies of additional material that came in between the time when the staff report went out and now um, that the applicant provided that I'll um, pass down the row here. Could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Gary O'Neill, okay. property owner. Right. So we uh, had looked at different options for the windows and now landed on uh, using a company in Wawoka to construct the windows exactly like the existing windows. And you can tell there used to be windows in the porch um, and they're, for some reason they're out and so we want to replace the, the old siding that's there and put back the, the windows that, that originally I, I assume used to be in the house. And it, uh, it's going to require four windows on the side there and then two on each end. It would be the exact same measurement as the windows below it. So on that photograph, there will be no red siding left. That will all be window. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's our desire. And you can tell with the concrete, you know, that's, that's below the windows, that's consistent throughout the house. Uh, so, so there obviously used to be windows there. And uh, we want to go back with, with the windows that look just like the rest of the house. Are you replacing all of the? No, just not just all the windows. Are you replacing your, where that siding is that we can see now? You're not. Re are you putting a window there? Yes, there'll be four. A set of four oh, windows okay. there. Well, there's three below. But that's a bigger opening than below, and you can oh, tell there used to be four there because there's four s unique slabs of the, the concrete oh, there okay. below the windows. So, and t the measurement allows for four windows that would be exactly the same size as the three below. Okay. And then on the two ends, uh, it would be uh, two windows that go in there. Okay. Those are old metal windows that someone put in there. Obviously didn't fill up the entire uh, spot for the window. Uh, the proposed windows we're putting in would be two full-size windows to fill that, that hole, that opening. What, uh, 12 over ones? Yeah. Then the French doors? Uh, so yeah, the French door uh, is uh, in disrepair, missing pieces, uh, won't hardly open. So we were proposing to go in with a, 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 a door similar to that with glass, but at the top have uh, the, pa the panes like the windows, so it would match the windows more. Again, it'd be all wood. Well, you've got two options you were talking about. This one? Is that your preferred design for the French doors? Yes. Which is on page 16. Yeah. Do you have, is there any evidence so option that a that's what that looked Good like instead page. of just a single glass? That's option No, there is not. Oh, that doesn't show that there was any bullions on the side or anything on the. No, uh, we, I guess it's our preference to try to make it look more like the window, the windows with so right. many windows, so. There, I mean, usually when we have historic um, material that's evidence of what it looked like, we prefer for it to be the same as. Would that work? Um, and I don't know if that's what it was then. Uh, I, I have no idea. We, I mean, it looks we, I mean, Katie? Um, yeah, our staff's kind of evaluation was that if not the original door, these look like they were certainly historic, um, or this door that you see here um, looked historic. And doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look to me like there would have been millions, month, yeah, anything like that um, removed. So and again, to clarify, you're talking about option A or option, or another option. Which one did you prefer? Uh, we're talking about matching it to what it looked like before, yes. though. So regardless of what those options are. Yeah. What? Right. What it looked like before. I mean, that's an original. <laughs> that's one of the doors is still there. Is that? Mm -hmm. you mean, I just, mean, just a single. No, well, then there'd be two singles. Build yeah, one back exactly identical to the one on the right, and put a single. Well, it's, so two, it's just, uh, two you're singles. going to have to totally rebuild them because the wood is or totally, whatever. rotten. It's, uh, it could be two new doors, but it needs but to be identical. Single 
painted glass. So you're saying rebuild them to that look right there? Yes, sir. That's my suggestion. So we think okay. that's original. Okay. I do. And we could put different kind of hinges on it, surely. I mean, the hinges. And I'm looking at this. Is this the, what is behind that? Well, they've put, they've put wood doors oh, wait. behind it because these are not safe. I mean, um, you can just push them in. Well, these are like storm I'm doors. I'm going to say, uh, maybe these are the storm doors. These are like storm doors. So the, is there another door behind it there? No, just this, this wood door behind it. A wood door. Yeah. That's, that's a wood door behind it. Yeah. I think there needs to be a door. <laughs> <laughs> are those doors, that wood, is that a wood door? Mm-hmm. French They're, doors. Or just one well, they're, they're like a closet door, but they are wood doors. Right. There are two of them. Yeah. What were you going to do to the wood door? We were just going to replace with some nice French doors. Well, that needs to be approved also. That, I think their plan was to remove the, the wood behind these doors yeah, because that's not historic. That's just well, you kind of filling the opening. Well, you said that that's a door. Yes. It's Remove okay. the wood door, wood door that's kind of closing off the opening. Because and it's just the, one. There's, there's actually two. There's oh, there's one. two. You can't yeah, see there's it. two. To remove we, those we'd like and to take install those new out French and doors just put in some opening. nice French, okay. French doors. Well, to me, those are the doors. They swing right, in. Those are the doors. And what we see in white are, are storm doors, and they both have to be approved. Right. There's two sets of doors here. Four doors. Total four doors. Uh, what are you doing to the... Are you... Were you planning on doing four doors here? No, we were thinking just taking the wood doors off because I thought that was just something they'd added there to keep somebody from breaking in the house, really. I mean, looking at the hinges, it was some kind of a, um, what do you call it? It has a, a spring in it. Yeah, spring loaded. I mean, those were spring loaded uh, storm, door. storm doors. <laughs> The existing one. Those are not a standard. What you're calling the wood doors, that's where the real doors were. That were well, probably some sort of. But, but those can't be original, though. That's those there. aren't. No. No. Yeah. So would you be okay with us removing those and just putting French doors there in lieu of a wood? Did they be wood French doors? Yes. Probably, yeah. Something that's appropriate. I mean, since we can't see what that original one is, then yeah. we can submit one as long as, I mean, I would think it would, I mean, it probably has this, had the same type of panel, perhaps, as the storm door. Yeah. If you look at a page, panel at the bottom with a single right, glass. Single glass. glass. Page yes. 15 of the staff report, they've got a proposal for French doors with divided light, and staff had thought that perhaps that just without the divided light would be a pretty close match to yes. what's there now. And, and so are those to be installed um, where the solid wood doors are now pulling into the space or are they where the storm doors are pushing? To come out. But to the out, yeah. out onto the porch, yeah. uh, swing out onto the porch. Right. Okay. That's, that's what we were hoping to do. Well, uh, the page before. Looking at the frame, the detail, I don't think, I don't know, I guess, we don't have the dimensions. Right. Yeah. I, Storm doors. Those are the storm. Would swing out. Yeah. The entry doors would swing in. Swing in. And so, they would be recessed, as the, the wood. As you see the wood there. Yeah. So I think that's the appropriate place for entry doors is where the wood doors are, not where the storm door. Right. Are. Okay. Do you agree? I agree. But they wouldn't. Could they be flush? And that's not. They wouldn't have the, the uh, recess. The. Right. There's just two sets. I mean, what would you do then with the storm, what we're calling now the storm door? Would you have two made to look like that? Wasn't planning on it. I mean, we just <laughs> wanted one, one set of doors, one set of French doors. Oh, so you were going to use and, that as the entry and right. take the wood doors down. Right. I mean, could he take the, storm could he go door. ahead, he could take the storm door off. And, and put in French doors to, the, to be the entry. Yes. Yeah. And again, this is not an entry, entry. this is a side Right. Probably won't be used hardly at all, but it's I mean, more, more for fun. look. And then, and then we do have the front door. We, we do want to put in new front doors. Uh, Can you go back a few follow? The one that shows the front on, back. One more. One more. Keep going. There. Nope. Nope. One more. We had one that showed its front on. 
Right there. Um, is that did he fill that frame? It looks on the left. Is that a piece of door? That's a piece of the door, it's isn't it? It's a piece it? of the old door. <laughs> yeah, it was right. broke off or something. I mean, yeah. I would keep the door or take pictures of the door in case anybody else wanted to okay. know, put that back. But Okay. Front door? Yeah, front door uh, got those uh, glass tile. Glass and, and again, it's not a, an old door, it's just a, a wood door. Looks like the side door there. <laughs> yeah. And it, <laughs> We, we just want to go in there with something, an attractive front wood front door, and we've, we found one in the neighborhood we really like. I uh, would rather not have as much glass. Kind of and, and we do have pictures. I don't know if you got that, Katie, this or it, not. This, yeah. Yeah, yes, ma'am, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the look that we were looking for. I think leaded glass would be beautiful on the sides, right? I mean, that would be a character defining for the architecture. This was, a, to me, uh, definitely was a duplex originally. Yeah. Right? I, I showed this two or three times. My home is the same architecture as, as this, except it was, of course, originally a single family. Uh -huh. The side porch, it's on the east side of mine, this is on the east side of yours, was inset, this extra part. Because this, I think they wanted to have more square footage, possibly, on this home for each floor. Because this is a large duplex. These are mm -hmm. 18, 17, 1,800 square feet, feet right, yeah. Yeah. per floor. So I think they wanted more square footage on that section, which is kind of a porch, as I recall, right? Yeah, it is. The living room, when you come in, you're into the living room. And then the port is a, is a porch. fireplace. And then a porch. Yeah. And then a porch on both floors. Both, both floors. Right. Right. And then, and then my my particular, and I think it's on other houses too. That that inset section, this east side, which is a library downstairs, has French doors. Yeah. And it also has French door storm doors, and my the original storm doors. So the, the eight eight panels or whatever with the yeah. you know months, they were they kind of mirror what the real door is. It's a pretty nice stuff. Come over to my house, I'll show you. Okay. Okay. Four hundred one. Get some ideas. Uh, so yeah, we just like that door, and if we need to put more glass in the side lights, I mean, we, we could be do. I think my wife just preferred less glass and, and more wood with, you know, just a, a tin of glass. So that's what we were looking for. But we, we definitely want to replace the front door and make it look, look better. Katie, can staff approve that, a front door? We can administratively approve replacement of a front door with something that is um, either very similar to the existing historic door or when the door is not historic. We technically can administratively approve going back with a door that's architecturally appropriate. We tend to bring those to the commission when it is um, a change in design and when we don't really have anything um, to base it on. I mean, you staff noted in their report that they this door that you proposed appeared said oh that it did not are you saying it doesn't appear as colonial revival that was my reaction to it Can you tell me? yeah i would agree with that also it it has more of a craftsman look to it um i think part of that has to do with the um, the the way that the glass panes are more horizontal than vertical mm -hmm. whereas when you look at the house you're you know, your 12 over ones, the 12 over ones are, are actually more vertical than horizontal. Um, I know it's a very subtle detail, but it, it kind of makes the difference between, you know, what fits and what doesn't. Fit. Right. So, well, so if the, the, wood, the glass panels or the side panels were, were all glass, would you be more, be more favorable to that or? I think it's just talking about portion of the, of the panel. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how how much or a little glass? I mean, typically, you would probably see more glass on the side lights yeah. and in the door itself. If there were, if the proportions of the panes were vertical instead of horizontal. Oh, I, I, I hear. This, okay. this one was proportional to the opening. I think there would be because it's a lot wider. Wider. Yeah. Well, that's, but, that's but are you pulling out the glass block? And you're pulling out the glass block side lights yeah. also, right? Yeah, we'd like to take right. all that out and put right. something like that in. Yeah. 
So maybe if we could, could be, see what that actually right. would look it's, like. It's a scale. Right. Yeah. So it's about seven foot feet wide. Pardon me? It's about a seven foot wide. Uh, or five. It's a 36 inch door. Two, two. Uh, this one shows is 70, 74 inches. Isn't yeah, it? I think oh, that's, is the, that's Is scale. the panel at the bottom under okay. the side light, is that been replaced over time or do you feel like it's original? Um, that's true, the casing. Well, not, there's a little panel at the bottom. I, I'm not sure. Um, I know the, the bottom of the door, the wood's fallen apart on the, the threshold, but I don't know if this was something original and they put in the, the, the glass in it like that. I can't imagine that being original, anything like that. I mean, it would be the easiest way for them to have done it then would be just to take the glass, a single piece of glass out and fill it in with the glass blocks. Meaning that that would be the original pattern. Can you see from the inside of the house? Sometimes on the inside, there's also a panel. No, there's no other panel. I, I have to look. I haven't paid that much attention. So you're saying just trying to keep what's there and change the glass? Well, you could redo it. But yeah, it needs. Yeah. Um, I, can we approve this with staff going forward for final approval, or do you? and bring back the front door. If we continue it, but something is submitted to staff that is, I don't know. Katie. I don't know how much staff wants to. Right. Yeah, based on the discussion right now, without more specific direction, I think I would prefer it to come back to the commission. Can we approve items one and two and continue item three? Um, and have you work with staff? Work with Katie on some other just options. Just the final door, final door. The front, the door. Just the front, front door. door. If we front can side light. specify the the option for the side door and that and that it will be the um, Wawoka window product. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, for the for the front door. So the side doors would be taken care of in the. Windows. Okay, that's the Marvin doors <coughs> that are with, with no mountains, single class. I make a motion to approve items one and two for HPCA 160022. Um, item one, no conditions. Um, as windows as submitted are approved. Two, on the French doors, um, to approve the door submitted with the condition that there are no um, mullions on, in the glass, just a single, single glass. And that they're going to be used where the solid wood doors are. Right. That the owner has the option to remove the storm doors. Okay. Second. Okay, moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, approved. Motion yeah. to uh, continue HPCA 16 item three until the... So if we continue to April 6th, then we need new documentation Tuesday of next week. Um, or we can continue to May 4th, and that gives you more time. Um, so the things that were approved, do they have to be they have to be done by a certain date as well? The, the, the things that were approved, you'll get a CA for those in 10 business days, and you have a year to complete that. So you can move forward with those even while the other item is continuing. The door we need, if we want to do it by April, you've got next Tuesday we need to get you something. Yeah. Or either that or we go to just May. Just the front door. Yeah, just the front door. Okay. Well, I think maybe we could work with you. If, if you wouldn't mind spending a little time with us, and sure. we get something to you. Yeah. Okay. So April 6th? Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Second. Did you move that, Joe? Yes. Okay, moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Challenge okay, three is continued. Thank, Thank you. you. HPCA 16 0023 at 2141 Northwest 28th Street, Shepherd Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Christine and Brian Huckleberry for certificate of appropriateness to one, demolish garage <coughs> elective, two, construct garage elective. 
three, pour new concrete at garage and driveway, elective. Okay. Christine Huckleberry, I'm uh, along with my husband, we own this house and we live there. Okay. All right, any questions for the Huckleberries? Do we need two motions, one to demolish and one to approve? Yes. It appears your only condition is for the concrete. Is that correct? So did you see that there was a staff had recommended a condition to the new concrete that it not be bright white, that it's um, a color that will match the aged appearance of the existing driveway, or are you you're okay with that condition? Yes, we're okay with that, and we understand uh, we are to provide, I guess, proof that we were able to match it. I wasn't quite clear on what we were to provide to prove that we were going to do that. Um, it's well, usually people don't provide us anything. It's just kind of part of the requirement that you go out and match. We'll encourage you to do kind of a test patch of what you think is going to match, so that you can verify it before you pour the whole thing. Okay, I understand. I make a motion to um, approve the demolition to to approve HPCA sixteen zero 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 two three item one to demolish the garage. Okay. Second. Moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. Item one is uh, approved. Uh, with the specific findings noted by staff. Acknowledged. I make a motion to approve HPCA 16-00023 items two and three with the specific findings noted by staff and the condition on number two that the proposed new concrete be the not bright white and will match the aged appearance. Second. Okay, moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you're approved. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's surprised. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Did a good job. Mr. Bummerson. Yes. <laughs> I was going to make note of that. Thank you. <laughs> we, so we saw it. Staff, how long have I been here? <laughs> Bummerson. <laughs> At least we have the right number of M's. That's been our typo <laughs> previously. Uh, HPCA 16 0024 at 436 Northwest 14th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of John D. Randolph by Bill Gummerson of Gummerson and Associates for certificate of appropriateness to four, repair, replace wood, Vega, detail, elective, 15, replace windows, jam, and trim on the east wing, elective, and 16, replace three windows at garage, elective. So I think maybe I can make short work of this. Um, in reference to the, um, the windows, I think staff has recommended those. Um, Bill Danger, architect in my office, did have a um, synthetic material recommended for the, um, for the little, little elements that we were putting on, little beam elements. And we're willing to use hardy board. In fact, we think that'll be fine to do, which I think is an acceptable material with this commission. Um, I will tell you that there are two or three different details. Uh, Bill shows a detail so that the water will not catch on the lower piece of wood that comes out, uh, which is our recommended detail to this. This has been worked on and these have been replaced. You actually re approved a CA um, some 20 years ago for those that we're looking at right well, here. You all didn't, but someone <laughs> did. I was probably on the commission then. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I think this would be a superior way and we can guarantee something that's going to last. Uh, and then we are more than willing to uh, continue the, um, the last item number 15, or next last item number 15, in reference to the windows on the east side as we do exploration. 
uh, and find out what the rot is underneath it. We've actually started with staff approval um, construction and the roof is actually underway right now. And, um, so, any questions of me? Anybody? I've never heard of that detail called that before, but called a vega. Well, a vega is typically, Alan, it's a log that comes out in Spanish or Mediterranean architecture. Right. Okay. And we firmly believe that the two areas where the vega occurs on this house, on the east and the west, this is the east side and on the west side, were additions to the original house. And uh, so somebody was just trying to replicate that yeah. detail. Right. Um, exactly one block to the east, the Hamptons house has a similar detail in terms of the vegas coming out. So we did a little bit of research to see if we were using the right terminology. They're fake vegas. So, so, so there's an actual hole in the plaster or the exterior Absolutely. skin yeah. behind these. Yes. So, so water is kind of coming and falling on these little wood blocks and then is it infiltrating into the wall as well? Is it Jeffrey, you are absolutely correct. And, and in fact, the um, a lot of the um, what would be cast stone is not on this house. It's actually wire mesh okay. with plaster on top of it. And where that has failed, water has gotten behind that. We're going back with the original stucco on top of that, but we're going to use another product behind that because that was done with wood and with metal. Okay. And so it's got, there's some real headaches. I think the neighborhood is very fortunate that the Randolphs have, have uh, stepped up to the bar. They have moved out of this house, and we have uh, approximately a year to do a restoration of the exterior okay. to include saving the garage, which we're doing. So, yeah, the plastic product caused concern um, as a replacement material. Okay. Okay. Are you asking for item? 15 to be continued? Yes, because we don't know yet in reference to item 15 uh, on the east wing, the exact status of decay on the inside, and we've just started this week on the house, on the exterior. So what we'll do is discovery, and then we'll touch base with Heather, um, pardon me, with Katie when we have more uh, information in reference to that, and come back to Katie, and then if she recommends it's coming to staff, and we need, I mean, to the commission, we will then do that. Katie, do we need two motions? Um, yes, I think we need one to continue and then one for I'm, approval. I make a motion to continue item 15 on HPCA 16-00024 until the... I would say do the May 4th, and then if May it's something 4th. that we can do administratively in between, we'll okay. get that. May 4th meeting. Okay. Second. May 4th? Yeah, that's good. And moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item 15 is continued. We thank you very much. We need to approve. Don't you want yeah. four and 16? Are we going four. To, we're going to approve something, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. Make four. a motion to approve. We're not done yet, Bill. HPCA 16-00024, item four, with the following condition, that the proposed material is changed to Hardy. Hardy board? Hardy board. Is that it? Uh, I think see. you can include 16. And, and well. uh, approve item 16. Was there any conditions on item 16? With a specific, no, there wouldn't the be any. Four. Yes. No. For item number four, you can strike the right. fourth. Mm -hmm. Strike item four on the specific findings. Second. And with, the, and with the specific findings for item 16 by staff. Right. Second. Sorry. Right. Moved by Joe Meach and second by Jennifer Bourne. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Items 4, 16 are approved. All right. And we, uh, yeah, we moved other business up. Seven. We've done that. So. Um, Eight. Uh, administrative approvals, uh, if anyone has questions. Uh, we had two items withdrawn um, and no closures to report. The um, 
Tiffany House National Register nomination that the commission reviewed at the previous meeting um, was recommended on to um, by City Council to the State Historic Preservation Office. So that'll be heard by them, I believe, at their April quarterly meeting. Okay. Board of Adjustment, Planning Commission, nothing. National Register nominations. Anything from the ad hoc committee? No, we have a workshop. The whole commission has a workshop next week, and okay. maybe we can. Was it next week? Yep. Do a little. You did not get an agenda because we didn't have one. So okay. you'll get one <laughs> shortly. You'll we'll get one. Anything from the municipal councilor's no. office? And next meeting date, regular scheduled meeting for the Historic Preservation Commission is April 6th. At 2 p.m., right here, new applications were received yesterday. New information on project continued from today's meeting uh, to the upcoming meeting must be submitted by 4 o'clock, Tuesday, March 8th. The next regular scheduled workshop uh, is Wednesday, March 9th, as we just said, at 1130, 420 West Main, Suite 900. Um, at that April, our April <coughs> meeting, we will have on the agenda to elect new a new chair and vice chair. That's it's the time of year that we're supposed to do that. So be contemplating. Um, you're glutton for you're in Yes, if you would like to do that or would like to suggest someone else do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, item nine, items from commissioners. I have one. Uh, last week in here to Chills, it came to our attention that one of a new listing in Harndale was not appropriately designated as HP. Uh, Shannon Rundle and Marva have done a fabulous job. Uh, they're trying to have some office, and I've suggested Remax first, that would happy <clears throat> to do that to send them all new listings that come up in the neighborhood because Shannon is no longer a full, fully functioning realtor, so she doesn't have that her access to that that nor she normally did in the past, that those realtors would be sent a formal letter just mentioning you are, have a new listing, we want to make sure that you realize it is an HP district and that they be encouraged to take the class that Katie and, and Gigi Faulkner and I teach. We can't get them all into the class just so they understand all of that, but we're going to suggest that they do. Okay, that's great. Was there a uh, text? We'll talk later. We saw that. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, do you have something to tell us? Do you know this? I am stepping down as commissioner. Very sad. My husband got a call to serve um, Risen Savior in Navarre, Florida, and we are moving the 4th of April. So, We're sorry. Bye bye, you. Oklahoma. Oh, so, this is your <laughs> It was an amazing time. The three years have flown by, and I really loved, loved working here and with everybody and a part of it, and I've learned so much. So, thank well, you. Appreciate your service and, and uh, input <laughs> and motions. And if you find a preservation commission there, I know we would be happy to um, I know. vouch I'm for you. I'm seeking one as we speak. So they might not be as nice as everybody, but Katie promised you guys would say that good stuff about me. So I'm going to hold you to it. Okay, anything else? All right, no citizens left. So we are adjourned. Thank you.